Good morning and welcome to Rosebread Homestead. Uh, today we're going to do something a little light and a little fun. Um, you know, this has been a tough year for all of us. The pandemic is still raging, even though uh, the cases are going down a little bit, which is great. We've had really bad winter storms. Uh, the grid went totally down in Texas, which was very scary and uh, debilitating for people in that state. We've been in political turmoil, all of these things. And I just thought we needed something a little bit sweet and uplifting. And so today we're going to be doing lemon curd, how to make it and how to preserve it for longer than how it just keeps in the refrigerator. So grab a pencil and paper so you can write down this recipe if you wish, and we'll get started in just a moment. I have all the ingredients laid out here, and they're right here next to these beautiful red roses that Jim got me for Valentine's Day a week ago. Um, red roses are significant to us, and of course that's part of our name, so I'm just going to take a second and tell the story about this. Uh, Jim and I met when we were in our PhD programs in Wyoming together. We actually met in my first statistics class, so you know my line there is, so what's the probability of that? Um, but Anyway, we were just barely first dating, and we decided to take a drive down to uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, check out the library of the university down there, and just do a little bit of fun shopping. And so at one point in time, um, we decided to go separate ways. We wanted to go into different stores, and we did agree to meet back at Jim's car at a certain time. So at the appointed time, I met him back at the car, and he opened the door for me, and there on my seat was a beautiful long stem red rose tied with a red ribbon and from that day forward he started calling me red and so that is is my nickname uh, from him and so hence he gives me red roses all the time and calls me red and so that's why we are Rose Red Homestead. So back to what we're doing today here are the ingredients. A, a very easy recipe there are just five ingredients I have four lemons, and these lemons are quite juicy, and um, we will take the zest and the juice from these lemons. Here's two cups of sugar. I have the equipment here ready to, um, once I um, zest these lemons, then I'm going to use this handy dandy tool, notice my yellow theme here, to uh, juice the lemons, and we'll need one cup of um, uh, lemon juice. And here is the microplaner that I'm going to be taking the zest from. And then eight eggs and a half a cup of butter. And that's it. So I'm going to take a few minutes and zest these lemons. And I'm just going to do it on this paper towel. I have washed these lemons and um, with hot soapy water and dried them to get the wax off. And I'm just going to do a very thin layer of this zesting. I don't want to get too much down into the white pith because that's a little bit bitter. So I'm going to zest these lemons and then um, I'm going to, once they're zested, squeeze the juice. So when we're to that point, we'll come back. You can see the lovely mound of um, lemon zest here from those four lemons. And um, I have one more lemon to do. Uh, to, I wanted to do that one on camera, so I'm going to cut off these little tip ends. We're now saving all of our kitchen garbage for compost, so I'm going to be saving all these lemon peels and cutting them in um, smaller pieces. And I like to kind of do this before I juice a lemon to sort of get it juicy on the inside. And I just place half of it in this part. And then here we go to squeeze. Here's hoping we get it all the way up to one cup. It's gonna be very close. Let's see if we made it. You know what? I think that's close enough.
For those of you that may not know what lemon curd is, it's very similar to the um, pie filling when you do a lemon meringue pie. It's the lemony part of lemon meringue pie. So um, I looked at a lot of different recipes. I have used recipes before for my Instant Pot. I've made it in my Instant Pot before. It turns out just great. Um, this one I am not going to be um, using the Instant Pot to make it, but we are going to use the Instant Pot to do water bath canning when we're at the end. All right, so um, I um, have a little sore and got some lemon juice there. Um, on a couple of recipes that I looked at, they mentioned this technique, which I thought it was just a fabulous idea. So I am going to put my um, sugar in here, and this is just regular granulated sugar. And with lemon curd, what you want is a very smooth, smooth consistency. And so uh, most recipes recommend that you use super fine sugar, which is finer than regular sugar, or if you don't have that, you can put regular sugar in your food processor and process it, and then you can turn it into super fine. But here's the cool thing. You can also just empty all of this um, lemon curd right in as well. I'm uh, not lemon curd, the uh, lemon zest in as well, and do both of them together, and it infuses the lemon flavor right into the sugar. So that's what we're going to do. Just get mixed up a little bit. Then we're going to go to high. And we're just going to let that process for a little bit of time until we have very fine sugar infused with that lemon zest. So I don't know if you can really see, but that is pretty lovely in there and it smells absolutely heavenly. Okay. Is we're going to step over to the um, KitchenAid and we are going to cream this butter. Okay, so that butter is creamed and now I'm going to add the sugar into that. have to scrape down the sides to be sure that everything really does get mixed. All right, now I'm going to crack eggs one at a time into this yellow bowl. Put them in one at a time until all the eggs are beaten. Now comes the lemon juice. All right, here we go. And again, I'm scraping all around to be sure got all of the ingredients. I'm going to move over to the saucepan that I have ready right here and just dump it right into this saucepan. Now this makes about a quart, maybe a little bit more. Now here comes the tricky part. What you want to do, some a lot of recipes call for it to be mixed in a double boiler. Um, I'm not going to do that. Um, we don't want it to come to a boil, but for the next probably seven minutes or so, um, we need to stir this constantly until it completely thickens. Uh, don't worry if it looks a little bit separated. That will clear up as it heats and begins to um, thicken. So I started off on about medium heat. Um, my unit goes to uh, from 
zero to nine. I started off at about a six to kind of get things going, and then I'm gonna move it right down to four or three. I want it on low so that I can watch closely. It must not come to a boil, but it does need to get hot and thick. If you'll notice, I've turned the um, heat down to three, and um, it's very smooth, much more smooth than it was before because the butter has now completely melted and integrated with the rest of the ingredients. Now, because I'm gonna water bath can, I have to ensure that the pH on this is less than 4.6. And for a better explanation of that, if you would like to watch our video that we did, oh, three or four weeks ago on salsa, making salsa, uh, that is all explained. Um, but I, um, and I need to take the pH of this and I'm going to use um, litmus paper. Even though I have a pH meter, I checked it out this morning and it's a little bit off. I need to recalibrate it and I don't have distilled water so I couldn't do that today. I'm just gonna do litmus paper. And if you look at this scale, what, I'm, what we are wanting to see is here's one, two, three, four. It needs to be 4.6 or less, so it has to be darker than a five, more like about a four, and we should be just fine to be able to water bath can it. So here we go. I'm gonna just stick this litmus paper in and let it get soaked for a minute, and then hold it up, see what we get as a match. So there is three. It's close to three, close to four. It's darker than five. So that means I'm good. Um, if I wasn't good, then I would not be able to safely water bath can it. I would have to uh, do one of the other ways of preserving it. So we're good to go. And I have jars ready and everything ready to go just as soon as this thickens up. So another thing is we need to bring it up to 170 degrees. And right now we're at 137, 42, 44, 45. So we're getting there. We don't want it to boil. So as soon as it's at 170 and has thickened up, we'll come back. We just realized that we had a camera glitch and we did not get the uh, final cooking and the pouring up in the jars. So I just poured directly from the pan and, and we had this much left over. This has started to cool now. You can see how thick it is. I guess Jim and I are just gonna, you know, have to sacrifice and eat the rest of this that's in this pan. Oh dear. And so um, I have prepared my um, Instant Pot. This is my older Instant Pot. And I'm just gonna put these down in. We wanna be sure that the water is up above the lids, which it is by about an inch. At our elevation, uh, we have to process this. Once it comes to a boil, we have to time it for 20 minutes. So I'm just gonna put this glass top on the top of it. We're not using pressure at all. Um, this is the pressure lid. I'm gonna just set it aside and wipe off my countertop here. Now, I mentioned earlier that this is not an approved recipe, meaning this has not been tested by the USDA. The USDA does have a recipe. Um, it calls for bottled lemon juice instead of fresh lemon juice. And I prefer the fresh lemon taste and that's why I checked the pH to be sure it was below 4.6 so that then I can safely water bath can. Now, um, this is one way to preserve the lemon curd. Um, the lemon curd that is over in that pan, if we were just to put that in a container and put it in the refrigerator, it would stay fresh for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks. It wouldn't last that long. In fact, it wouldn't even last a day the way we've been doing lately. Um, if you decide to water bath can, uh, once you take these jars, once they have been completely processed, um, those will stay good on your pantry shelf. <clears throat> they do not have to be refrigerated and they will last for three or four months. Not a long shelf life, even after canning. Uh, the longest term way to store um, lemon curd is using a freeze dryer, which this is the fun that we have had over this past week. We did a whole batch, it filled one tray. One tray will hold about five cups, so it easily held um, the batch that we've made. And then once it came out, 
uh, once it was completely freeze dried, then we put it in the blender and we pulverized it. So this is lemon curd powder. Now, I started off wanting to show you the whole quart. It filled a whole quart jar, but of course, as you can see, we have been practicing with it and um, test, taste testing all along uh, in order to show how we reconstitute this. So um, I'm going to, while this is processing, I'm gonna show you how we reconstitute this. And we can literally not tell the difference. Once we've reconstituted this, we can't tell the difference between this and just fresh off the stove. And so this, is, this will last for a really long time. Has lots of eggs in it, uh, but with freeze drying and then vacuum sealing, it should last, oh, several years. And of course, if things get really rough, what if we couldn't get lemons anymore? Oh my goodness, that would be awful. And so for us, I wanna have a, actually a lot of this lemon curd freeze dried powder um, preserved so that um, we can have a little bit of sunshine um, in our lives if things start getting really tough. So I'm gonna put some water on to boil <clears throat> and um, we'll come back in just a moment. All right, so we can see that the water is boiling in the instant pot, and I just turned it from manual to slow cook to turn it down just a little bit. We want to be sure that it maintains that boil. I've already set the timer for 20 minutes. So let's reconstitute some lemon curd. So I have about a cup from here. Oh my goodness sake, we're gonna to have to do another batch here pretty quick. And I'm just gonna put it right here in this bowl and this boiling water. I'm gonna start with a half a cup. It's going to take a little bit more than that, but we're going to start with a half a cup. One of the things that Jim and I have learned in our experimentation is to start slow. Um, it, it just seems like every single batch is a little bit different, and so we want to put less water than is needed. And so um, because this reconstitutes fairly quickly, Um, the best thing that we found to use is our immersion blender with the whip. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of this. Then we're just going to let it sit for a little while uh, to allow the water to completely be absorbed by the powder. And you can see in here that even though we ran it through our blender that there are some larger little pieces on the top. They always seem to migrate to the top. So this is thickening up really nicely. And once we get that in the refrigerator, then it is going to um, just thicken completely and do just fine. So we'll come back when everything is a little bit more done and then we are going to put together quite a lovely treat. So it's just been about 20 minutes and look how nicely that this is set up. We took a little taste and it's fairly smooth. And then what we have learned is that once it is set up, then we like to give it one last stir with this. And that usually finishes the stirring beautifully. And then we set this in the refrigerator and let it cool down. Oh, there's the timer. Perfect timing, so I'm going to turn this off. And our water bath can is done, so let's lift these jars out. Well, they look beautiful. And these are good for three or four months on your pantry shelf. If they start separating and starts turning a little bit brown, it's time to throw them away. What can we do with lemon curd? How is it used? Well, you can put lemon curd on anything you want to. It goes great over ice cream. It goes um, great as a filling in cakes. Split those layers and fill it with the lemon curd. And then frost as usual, it's, it's wonderful. Um, you can use it over pancakes or waffles. 
Um, there are just a myriad of uses, but what we're going to do right now is we are going to quickly build a couple of breakfast parfaits. So these are the ingredients I'm going to use. This is some of our gingerbread uh, granola, and we have done a video on this, so if you want this recipe, you can look for that other video. I have some plain Greek yogurt, and I have the, the leftover lemon curd from this morning's um, batch of lemon curd, and then I have this batch that we just reconstituted. So, I have these tall glasses, and they're probably not parfait glasses, but they will certainly do. And um, I'm going to start with about a quarter of a cup of this uh, granola in the bottom. I'm going to layer some yogurt. And this is kind of tricky because I don't want it smearing the glass as it goes down. Perfect. And I'm going to just straighten out those layers so that they're sort of flat. Then I'm going to put on a layer of the lemon curd. Oh, I smeared the glass there. And then for this one, I'm just going to use the reconstituted and spoon it in. It works much better. You can probably tell I am a little bit partial to the lemon curd. And then a bit more of the yogurt. Finishing up with the lemon curd. Finishing up with some raspberries. And we'll chill these. And they will be delicious tomorrow morning for our breakfast. So there we have it. Breakfast parfaits with lemon curd. So we have three ways of preserving lemon curd. We can put it in the freezer, um, in the jars instead of water bath canning, just put the jars right in the freezer or another container in the freezer. It will last for a year in the freezer. Water bath can it, it will last for three or four months. Oh, we just had one pop. Or you can freeze dry it if you happen to have a freeze dryer <clears throat> and then pulverize it so it's a powder and it will keep for many, many years. So enjoy lemon curd. Enjoy looking toward spring. It's on the way and things are looking up. So thank you for joining us and we will see you for our next video.